Well, Mr. Kogan and I would always sit around the classroom and talk about, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we were both in a classroom to teach together? I guess you have to be careful what you wish for. Um, this was not an ideal situation, but just like any bad situation, you look at it, you make the best of it. I tried to make one of these videos and it was just me talking to a grease board and it came out really bad. So if I invited Mr. Kogan over to my man cave right here and we got to like bounce stuff off each other, it'd be a little bit more fluid, we'd be a little bit more animated and maybe even a little bit more funnier. Um, we hope you're all doing well. Um, we totally miss you guys. We wish we were in the classroom. Of course, doing something like this is a little unorthodox because the ideas and the responses we're looking as we're going along through any type of um, lesson comes from you, the students. So we're going to do our best. We're going to see what happens here. Um, we're now getting into the 20s. Now, there's a couple of activities you had. One had to deal with Warren G. Harding's um, speech, and the other one had to do with uh, the Teapot Dome scandal. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of give you an overview of where we're at in the curriculum and then where we're going. So right now, the best way we can do that, and I know you've seen this quite a bit, is through an economic cycle. Now, for all intents and purposes, which is, what is great about the economic cycle is this. Um, it's going to show us where we're at economically. It's also going to like serve as a little bit of a timeline, which is kind of nice. So it's going to show you where we're at and where we're going. But to review the parts of it, up here you have a boom. Right down here you have a recession. Down here you have a depression. Now, right up here, all right, as we've reviewed before, if you're in an economic boom, things are going well. People have jobs, industry's doing well. Uh, and if people have money, they're buying things. What are they buying? They're buying cell phones, they're buying game systems. All of that is wonderful because people have money. They're also going on vacations more. Now, when things are not going as well, you have a little bit of a losing streak here, an economic slump and a recession. Now here, you can go here, you can go here, the, the quick, it can be a quick rebound, as we might see in the early 20s, or it can go down here. Now, the question that we get often is, uh, well, how long do you stay up there? Everything is situation dependent. Um, you could be up here for a while. You can be up here for you know weeks, years. You can be here for a decade, as we saw uh, during the Great Depression. Yeah, with the boom, if you look at like current state of the world affairs, we had a boom in our economy from basically 2007 until now. So that's a 13 year boom. It's the longest boom we've ever had as a country right now. However, because of everything going on in the world, we're kind of starting to end that boom and head now into a recession. Now, when you look at going into here, of course, statistics are off the statistics. Then who's telling you where we're at can, can vary. A president will say we're doing well and an economist can say we're not doing well. Now, in terms of behavior, um, when we're talking about consumer behavior, when you're getting towards a recession or a depression, if you look at the current situations right now in close contact, all right, one of the things I have to plan for is this. In about another week or two, I'm going to need a haircut, all right? So I'm not going to go to the barbershop. I'm, I'm not going to go to the barbershop because of the close contact thing. So probably in about two weeks, I'm going to look like this guy because I'm just going to break out the buzzers and I'm going to shave my head instead. Much, much easier. Um, the other thing is I usually like to get a sandwich after I go and get a haircut. My small business going, is going to be affected by that, the deli I would go to. Um, but back to this, you know, wherever you're at in here is going to often um, dictate behavior. So, boom, we said economic prosperity, people are doing well, um, people have money, recession, you have a little bit of a slump. Yeah, think of it like the boom, like, like Mr. Heek said before, they are spending money. You're going on vacation, you're buying a car, you're buying a TV, buying a new washer machine, because think it's the 1920s. You know, people are like, wow, I don't have to wash my own clothes anymore. I can go out and buy a washing machine. So they spend, they spend, they spend. And all of a sudden, you, you look at your bank account, and you're like, wow, I, I don't have any money left. You know, and because people were spending money, factories were producing, 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 producing. And then all of a sudden, when I decide, my, my family decides, we're not going to spend any more money. We've got to start saving. We stop buying those things. Well, those factories who during World War I were mass producing weapons, were mass producing goods, the farmers were mass producing food to feed our soldiers. Now, all of a sudden, I'm not buying those things that I used to buy. And now they have a surplus in their warehouse. Well, when we have a surplus in an economy, that's not really a good thing. No, bueno. so, so when they have too much, they can't sell it. All of a sudden, prices drop. People still don't buy. You're a factory owner. You don't need to produce. What are you going to do with your employees? You're going to lay them off. So now unemployment's going to start to go up. This is where we hit that economic recession point. So now getting down to a depression, you remember all those wonderful things we talked about in the boom? Well, down here, you're going to see 
a complete disaster here. They're going to lay off workers. They're going to have to close businesses. Production, not only does it slow, it's going to stop. Um, you're going to see high rates of poverty. You're going to have, uh, again, maybe even sales before you even get to that bankruptcy where we're, we're trying to close business. Right down here is a pretty complete utter disaster. Now, And I, I know yeah, yeah. all of you know of the Great Depression, you know, by the time you've heard of it already. Don't think that our country hasn't gone through many depressions throughout our history. This little roller coaster scale is not set in stone. Booms can be through the roof and they can last for dozens of years. Depressions and recessions can be really quick. It's almost like in the 1920s, we're going to see the recession after World War I kind of goes to here and then we go right back up. Where the Great Depression of the 1930s, we're going down like 30 feet below this chart. So don't get thinking like, oh, there's a boom here, there's a depression here, and it's always in this 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 set. Could be really, really high, could be really, really low, could be really spread out over time. And no matter what's gonna happen in your lifetime, you're gonna see the economy go like this. So if you're, you know, economics can be a boring class, as I know, but when it comes to looking at this, this was the one big takeaway I took for myself professionally. Um, when you're looking at this, right, no matter where you're at, and this is just something to take to you back as you're planning on what you're going to do after high school, it'll be a trade school, college, whatnot, you know, something to put into your head right now. Um, since you now know that it's going to go like this, all right? Think about, you know, whatever career you're choosing, are you going to be employed at any of these states? That's just something to put into your head. Um, going back to this, all right? So during World War I, we were in an economic boom. Again, as Mr. Kogan said, you know, factories were making wartime goods. Um, you had companies such as Ford that were making vehicles that can be used. Uh, they were bringing over ambulances that needed to be, of course, put together over in Europe. Johnson & Johnson making medical products for the people who were treating wounds and casualties over there. Farmers. Usually, we go through the curriculum. We talked about westward expansion. Farmers suffered when they moved out west. Now, farmers are doing really well because, as you recall from World War I, Herbert Hoover said, food will win the war. So, between 1914, we can use these years... To 18 we're doing well and of course you saw from class when we we're looking at the charts we were trading with both sides even though we were neutral so war ends are you going to need as a factory to continue to make wartime goods no so early on as Kogan was, Mr. Kogan was saying is that we start to see a little bit of a recession in the early 20s and if you think about all those returning soldiers all those doughboys coming back from from Europe what are they going to want when they get home they're going to want a job, you know, and factory owners aren't going to be like, oh, sorry, you were busy fighting for our freedoms. We're not going to rehire you. So all of those people who had been working in the factories, they're kind of out of luck as the doughboys are returning home, taking over the jobs <coughs> in the factories. So uh, we're early 1920s, we're in a recession. But then, boom, we go up. And of course, you know, historians and economists can go, all right, well, you know, we were in a, of course we were in a boom, but this can often be debated because a lot of it was purchased on credit. This is called a recovery. Recovery, beautiful. You know, and this economic recovery of the early 1920s is going to lead to the nickname of this decade because it was such a great time to be alive economically, socially, um, um, culturally, yes. you'd say. You know, it, you, it earns the nickname, and I'm sure many of you are aware of it, the Roaring Twenties. Now, what goes up must come down. The unfortunate thing is, yeah, you can go high to a certain point, but then eventually gravity takes effect and you will come down. All right, so now, in the 20s, everything's going well. People are buying more consumer products, refrigerators, cars, you name it. Everything's going well. And then, bang. 1929, marked by the stock market crash, um, the Great Depression begins. Now, as we get along in, later on in the end of this unit, there are going to be a variety of things that cause this to go down. Everybody goes, all right, well, what's the cause of the Great Depression? Everybody thinks stock market crash, which is partially true. That's usually the event that's used for it. If I would make a comparison, the stock market crash to the Great Depression is like the assassination of the Archduke was to the cause of World War I. It sparked it, but there were a lot of underlining issues as our no other videos that we're gonna be doing, if this thing works, uh, um, we'll, we'll be highlighting those for you as well. Similar with the Maine, the USS Maine being sunk, uh, getting the uh, Spanish-American War going on. That was just one cause. That was the spark that really gets it going. So now, all right, throughout the 30s, Right, you're going to see this economic depression that goes on. And this is going to go on for a while. Now, what's going to bring us back up? 
World War II. Now, you talk about sparks, and you talk about history repeating itself, all right? Well, if you look right here, exactly what's happening over here is gonna happen over here. Now, what's gonna be the spark, all right? Here's just little spoiler alerts here. You're gonna have World War II is gonna start to take place in the late 1930s in Europe and then over in the Pacific. We, of course, similar to here, are going to remain neutral. Now, as we're remaining neutral, you probably heard of December 7, 1941, where Pearl Harbor was bombed by the Japanese. Now, all of a sudden, now we're involved in the war. Now, what did factories have to start making? Wartime goods. They're going to have to start making more bullets, rifles, uh, typewriter companies were making bullets. Um, you're going to have women going back to work as well, while men are going off to fight in Europe and the Pacific. Of course, women also did get involved in World War II, similar as you talked about in World War I, but the large percentages of it were men. We missing anything? I don't know. I think this is a pretty good overview of the economic cycle for you. Um, Mr. Heeg and I will see you guys again in a couple of minutes as we're going to hopefully film another one of these, um, talking about the prosperity that did take place during the 1920s. This is kind of an overview of about 25 years of history. There's a lot going on in the Great Depression. There's a lot going on in the recovery, what's called the New Deal of Franklin Roosevelt that we're not even, we didn't even touch on. We just kind of wanted to give you this broad overview of how an economy works in the easiest sense possible. Because when you get to take micro and macro, macroeconomics when you're in high school and in college, it is mind-blowingly crazy, the amount of information that goes on. So this is kind of like the Barney style, the, the phrase Mr. Heeg and I like to use, the Barney style of how an economy works. We'll see you guys soon. Right. Ben?